some stories. Bring it back memories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best ones I can't remember, though. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. The be- yeah, always the best ones you can't remember. But with you, uh, when it comes to cannabis, I mean, that's that's something you've been fighting for for a very long time. That's always... Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that um, cannabis legalization is, in my... And it's one of... It's a very important topic, in my opinion, you mm-hmm. know, today. Um, I'm a very outspoken advocate for medical marijuana and for recreational... Yeah. marijuana I think that it is absolutely ridiculous that anybody in our country is in prison for a fucking plant come on now for real like it's yeah. it's the time has come where if you and if we if you look into the history behind it I think as we see too without getting too detailed into why cannabis is illegal to begin with you know in the vein of today's political climate, you know, how everybody's calling everything racist and everything, the cancel culture that we have today. Yeah. If you really want to think about it, the cold hard truth is that cannabis prohibition was started, you know, based on some different policies to try to, um, what would the word be, to try to make things illegal that the African American, the Mexican community, and a lot, you know, a lot of stuff was based in. It also had to do with when alcohol, when prohibition ended. Yeah. You know, Ensinger and a bunch of people that were involved in the federal government, you know, the, the prohibition right. guys were real heavy on it. But then also Richard Nixon, who was the one who put it on and made it a level one controlled substance. Mm-hmm. The truth is he used his policies and made cannabis schedule one to try to. That was his way of kind of punching the counterculture in the gut. Yeah. A lot of the anti-Vietnam, the hippies, a lot of the uh, African Americans at the time, and a lot of the civil rights leaders and the people who he adamantly opposed were all cannabis users. Yeah. So what a better way than, you know, let's make it a controlled, you know, level one controlled substance, put it in the same tier as LSD and heroin and, you know, other kind of drugs like that. And it was right. their way of prosecuting his political opponents. And it spiraled into something that just turned into a ridiculous war on drugs Mm -hmm. and a ridiculous waste of money and a ridiculous waste of our resources. And, you know, it's, it's common sense as to where I, I get frustrated with it because for example, if you look at the history of cannabis Mm -hmm. and the amount of, but there's one thing I want to add to you with that. Yeah. Uh, When you're talking about the prohibition of that era, William H. Hearst, well, he yeah, was another was, one. He yes. owned the. Yeah, I'm sure you know about more about this than I do. Uh, he owned the paper mills and he owned the lumber industry, lumber industry at that point. He mm-hmm. was kind of a what we consider as a, nom- a monopoly at that point. Oh yeah, the same kind of as uh, the Rockefellers, the Carnegies. That he was a part of that era. And like I said, you can stop me when I'm wrong. The he was very much a monopoly unto himself. He. At that point, he there was an article printed and said that hemp, the new billion-dollar industry, and that's what started him going to the anti-campaigns of well, cannabis. Right. There was there was two there was two sides to that. The hemp and the and the. I mean, you could you could call all hemp marijuana. It's all cannabis plants. You know, marijuana by today's standards is just contains over a certain level of THC. Mm-hmm. Whereas hemp is under a certain level of THC and has different cannabinoid properties and different, you know, different compounds that don't necessarily appear in marijuana. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, yeah, a lot of them came down on the hemp just as hard because of the fact uh, DuPont was a senator as well. Yes. And he was big into the plastics and a lot of different, you know, materials that they were into. Oh, that, oh, so it was back then, uh, the DuPont was a part of the plastics at that point. That's, was, that's uh, when that, that was the turn of the... The point of you not using hemp and all that to, and then they were using plastics. Yeah, well, they started. I mean, and back in the day, all of the um, the Navy's ropes were all hemp ropes. Mm-hmm. All of the old sailing vessels, everything was all hemp ropes. Yeah. They had hemp hemp um, sails on the old sailboats, and so then when you had a lot of these businessmen and politicians that started to develop the plastics industry, they had nylon rope. You know, they had all stuff that they could make from hemp that they were now able to synthetically create 
and had their businesses involved. So what's the number one way to eliminate the competition? Let's make hemp illegal along with, along with you know, marijuana and classify it in the same way now. You know, we've come a long way since then when it comes to hemp. But I, I like to think that the um, prohibition of what we would call marijuana is a little bit more stringent these days. You know, there are still a lot of states that hemp is, can, you know, people get arrested for having hemp flour, CBD products, you know, if they mm -hmm. contain trace amounts of THC, because it just gets lumped in, it gets lumped into the, you know, to the uh, marijuana right. and recreational and medical use too. And, but you are, you are right. There is, there's multi, there's a multifaceted, um, beginning to the prohibition of cannabis and it had a lot to do with the politics like you had said it had a lot you know with the different industry and the hemp side it had a lot to do with a lot of the politicians not liking a lot of the mexican immigrants that were coming into the south that were smoking moda you know as, as yeah. they called it and that was you know and it was kind of a way to cur try to curb immigration too and they knew that cannabis use was heavy amongst uh, African Americans in the South in different places who politically at the time they were trying to oppress and mm -hmm. the counterculture that was adopted in the 60s by the hippies and the anti-Vietnam uh, movement is what kind of pushed it over the edge you mm -hmm. know and that started it all and that's when it yeah. just got it got out of hand and I think it's time for common sense and, you know if you look at our state in Pennsylvania where we are I mean, you're drinking whiskey that you bought from a state-owned liquor store. Very much. They are in the market of selling an addictive substance that has killed thousands of people, and we cannot deny that. You can't yeah, deny you can't. that in large amounts, you know, alcohol and alcoholism has caused horrible, horrible things around the world, not just in America, you know, but a, a child can't even watch an NFL football game on a Sunday or a sporting event or something without having 10 beer commercials, you know, blasted. You have Corona, you have Budweiser, all these alcohol companies that are advertising in a substance that we know is known. Very to, dangerous. Very dangerous. At the, at the very least. And our state's in that business because, you know, they repealed prohibition at the end of the 1920s and it just mm. caused, it just caught, you know, that it was normalized then and the cannabis was demonized, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of looking back at things that way. And I think what the number one start would be is, you know, allowing the federal government removing marijuana from the scheduled one controlled substance. That's a huge thing. Yeah. We already have the federal government to an extent respect states' rights when it comes to legalization, but it's still illegal federally. Mm -hmm. So it messes with so many people's well beings as far as jobs go, as far as employment, you know, because something's still federally illegal. So that's the guys that, that, you know, that's used to discriminate against cannabis users. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's time to be regulated, not over-regulated. That's another thing, too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there are some legal states that have uh, taxed too much, that have put way too much of a burden on, you know, why would somebody in California want to pay, you know, X amount of dollars at their cannabis tax is ridiculous out there, 30% in some market, you know, right, someplace. Right. I'm not exactly sure what the numbers are, but it's incredibly high. And it fueled the black market. And I think that what needs to be done is it needs to be safely regulated so where it can be grown safely without harmful pesticides, without harmful chemicals, and then we can test our product and put a safe product out into the market for people to use that they're not buying on the streets with God knows what. In, you know, right, right. And, being laced. So yeah, well, that, that's, yes. And that's a whole other thing in itself, you know, like the whole thing of weed being laced. That's... 95% of that is propaganda that's thrown out there by uneducated people who are just trying to scare people out of consuming cannabis. I put it like this, all right? You have a drug dealer who's selling marijuana, mm -hmm. and he's also selling heroin and fentanyl or cocaine or an illicit substance that's twice the cost of that marijuana. Why would he take a more expensive drug and mix it in with his cheaper drug and eventually try to kill the people who's making money it just doesn't make sense not to say that there's not there. that that's, there's not yeah, people yeah. that are out there doing that but that's a scare tactic you know yeah but, you're right on that yeah that you point get, there makes a lot of sense and I'm, nobody's ever spoke about that yeah before. you want to eliminate that regulate it test it you know mm -hmm. when you go buy cannabis in a legal recreational state or medical cannabis here at home you know now not all states some states they can opt out of testing but most states require 
stuff to be tested. And if it's not, I believe in Michigan, I've seen that if it's not tested, it states right on, you know, on the label. Right, so you know what you're getting into. You know, yeah, you know it's safe. It's a safe alternative. And not to mention the economic benefits that we could reap here at home, especially. I mean, if you look at Colorado and a lot of states out west, their can the taxes on their cannabis products are used to improve their infrastructure. I mean, in our state alone, we have our highways are in deplorable shape. We have a state budget that's way out of hand and you know hasn't been balanced in years. We could be using the tax revenue from cannabis sales to improve our schools, to improve our highways, our roads to improve our social programs that we need, our mental health counseling, mm -hmm. our programs for disabled people, our programs for people who truly need it, places where money can be spent, mm -hmm. you know, instead of just going into the pockets of Harrisburg politicians or just going in, because look at the casinos that they have in Pennsylvania that was supposed to be, the tax revenue for the casinos right. was supposed to be our savior, no more property taxes, blah, blah, blah. They made all these promises. Where'd that money go? Yeah, you, you know, it, yeah, it has to be regulated and done the right way, but at the same time, it has to be regulated so it's just not going to be big business. They have to be able to have smaller mom and pop businesses, smaller grows, bigger grows, They'll have a free and open market. Right. You know, people should be able to home grow on their own, whether it's medical or recreationally. You know, I think it's something that could benefit our our economy and our nation. I'm not one of those people right. that believes that if people just we legalize marijuana and people are going to be smoking and there's going to be car accidents everywhere and it won't be a, no, no, it's, no it's not like this to where it's going to inebriate. But you were, you brought up a good point too the the testing of it that's another mm -hmm. thing we got to watch out for because like the FDA for our food I mean they're yeah in my opinion they've been they're they themselves are money driven at a point but they they're also in place for a good point I they mean are. they We'd have to have something washing over all of it that was fair. Mm -hmm. you know well, I mean? they have Food independent testing. labs. There's thousands of independent, independent accredited labs across okay. the country testing cannabis products now, testing hemp, testing, you know, multiple right. different labs doing this. And what we're doing is making sure that you're not inhaling pesticides and molds mm -hmm. and different kinds of toxic chemicals that are grown. Because if you look at a lot of the illegal market, the black market out west, is... Um, funded by cartels growing illegal grows on federal land out there. Which and has been going on for It's been years, going yeah. on for a long time, but they have, they're murdering people. I mean, hikers that just stumble across to grow, they're setting booby traps, they're murdering people, there's violence, they're, they're fueling that whole, that whole underbelly, that whole criminal underworld, because there's still places in this country, and even right there where they're growing it, where it's cheaper to buy it you know, the black market, because it's still illegal. Right. If we eliminate that and federally lift the, the restrictions and let the states set their own standards to where it's legal, it's going to put those guys out of business. You know, it's easy, it's easy to stop, well, it's not easy to stop, but it is possible to stop narcotics trafficking because people are not growing cacao in the United States. You know, it's not domestically grown. Mm -hmm. It's not like people are growing fields of opium. You know, you don't go out west and there's not a hundred acre <laughs> poppy right, field, right, you know. Right. It's something that has to be created, can be stopped. Whereas cannabis is something that can be grown anywhere around our country. And it's just a burden on law enforcement, too, that the time that they have to spend to go in and arrest people and prosecute them and run them through the system. You know, when they could be spending their resources and their time going after the real problems, the violent criminals, the drug and games. I, I want to stop you there, too, because you've been through this, and I want yeah, you to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes to the, and you know as well as I do, the, the DUI system, which points of it, yes, I get it. If you're, you're messed up, you're driving, you shouldn't be doing it because you have the potential to kill somebody. But right. it has become a money racket. And with you, you've been through the arresting as a, D, as a DWI. If well, you're DUI the, is a medical patient. And this, this, this kind of goes... This is a whole other topic in itself, okay. you know. But, yeah, we'll, we'll switch gears here to, to get off the broader subject, and let's just talk locally here in Pennsylvania. Okay. There's a lot of advocates and people involved in the medical cannabis industry that want Pennsylvania's laws to be changed because right now, as it stands in Pennsylvania, any trace amount of THC in your blood can be dictated. It can be a D, it's a DUI. You're charged regardless, okay? okay? They the cops do not have to prove impairment. They don't have to do any of that. The fact that it is zero tolerance law, so if you have it in your system, 
Okay. Okay. You're a DUI arrest. That's a third tier DUI too. Okay. So for example, you could be in Nevada or you could go on a hunting trip in Alaska where it's 100% legal up there, mm -hmm. indulge, and then come home a week later, you're in a car wreck. Okay. You're not high. It's been a week or two since you've smoked pot. Yeah. And that cop just thinks that your eyes are red or they draw blood or they have a suspicion, okay? Or let's just say you fit a profile, all right? Okay. You look like a hippie. You're a dude with a tie-dyed shirt on, a Grateful Dead sticker on your car. Yeah. That cop knows that they just have to find the probable cause in order to, you know, in order to get to that blood test. Makes but sense. they can manipulate and they manipulate how, oh, what the word, how they go about doing that in order to get to that point, okay? And so there are no protections in place right now for medical cannabis patients here in Pennsylvania for DUI. And that's something that just had a rally just this past week in Harrisburg to try to get our state, the Medical Marijuana Advisory Board, and people here to influence our legislators to offer DUI protections for medical marijuana patients. Because right now, what they're doing, this has happened in multiple municipalities all across the state. This information can be validated by multiple lawyers. In fact, there's a really great, a great lawyer out of um, Pittsburgh named Patrick Nightingale who's doing some great work uh, right now in the cannabis field. And Brian Manchester out of Belfont is another lawyer who I've worked with when I've had my issues to try to get, you know, to try to resolve this problem. Yes. And what, what they're doing is the minute that the police find out that you have a medical marijuana card, they're going after that DUI right away because the majority of them don't agree with the program. The truth is they don't like it because it takes away from their bottom dollar. They have 275,000 people with medical marijuana cards that are no longer buying their drugs illicitly off the street. So they're not able to be arrested. They're not able to generate that income for running them through the court system, their fines, their costs, all that. You know, so right. they just they choose to put those horse blinders on and not, you know, it's illegal, so that's the way we're gonna roll with it. And they are abusing the civil rights of our medical marijuana patients and just not medical marijuana patients anybody you know that uses cannabis in general you know but especially our medical marijuana patients because it paints a target right on your back yeah. so what had happened with me without getting into detail um i went through a dui checkpoint with medical marijuana in the back of my truck it was not even in the cab of my truck mm -hmm. they claimed they smelled it so whether or not that was the case, that's not the issue. Um, long story short is I got charged with a third tier DUI simply because I had the medical cannabis in my vehicle. They knew it was in my system. So open and shut case for them. Mm -hmm. um, my lawyer, who was very diligent, who did his job, and Brian Manchester did an amazing job with this, he, um, we got the cops to admit under oath and on the record, by the way, this is another thing, is that if you ever get into a problem with a cannabis crime or a medical marijuana or something like that, always pay to have the court reporter there for the preliminary hearing. We paid a little bit of extra money to okay. have the court reporter in there. And what this did was it valid, you know, it gets everything on record. We eventually had the police officer admitted under oath that the only reason they pulled me out of my vehicle was because I told them I had a medical marijuana card. So they singled me out, pulled me out of my vehicle, went through the sobriety test, ripped my entire vehicle apart, cuffed me, stuffed me, you know, took me downtown, booked me for all of this. There's one thing I want to back up to. Yeah, yeah. You were not even, you were not drunk or anything at that I time. I wasn't drunk. I had a 0.00 BAC. No alcohol, yeah. nothing. Not a drop of alcohol. And so with that being said, when they said, do you have, and he, the way he said, do you have any illegal drugs? or weed in your car. He goes, where's the weed at? I smell, and I said, I don't have any illegal drugs. What do you mean by that? And I said, well, I have legal, I have my medical cannabis in the back. Oh, that was a mistake right there. Then that was like, I was like fucking ISIS fighter at that point, dude. I'm serious, man. You know, they were like treating me like a goddamn terrorist. Mm -hmm. Drive around here, four or five cops, ripping it apart, you know, going through everything over something that was legal mm -hmm. in this state. Now they claim ignorance. They claim that they didn't know we were allowed to have dried flour. We did, they didn't know we were allowed to have bud, yada, 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 yada. I cried bullshit on that because if a police officer pulls you over and arrests you for a crime, you can't plead ignorance and go, oh, I didn't know I wasn't allowed to do this. I didn't know I, I couldn't drive this fast in mm -hmm. here. So why is it okay for them to sit there and say, we didn't know you could, you know, I had 
everything labeled. And they went through a million excuses. And I'm not going to get into detail, you know. Yeah. If anybody was interested, I'd be willing, you know, to give more detail about this if they're in the same situation that I was in. But I had a good lawyer that put up, you know, a good fight in court and pretty much got the trooper. He, the trooper admitted that I was discriminated against, that they pulled me out of my car and violated my civil rights by arresting me and going through all of them, and not to mention took hundreds of dollars worth of medical cannabis from me, which I have not got back till this day, which we'll go down that road in a second here. So pretty much we were told by the state trooper in court that that was the main reason they pulled me out of my car. That was it. That was their because problem. You admitting to because this. I told them I had a medical marijuana card. Whether he smelled it, and it's since been decided in our state, and there's been multiple courts in our state that have said that even the smell of medical marijuana is not probable cause to search someone's car. It wasn't like I rolled up to the checkpoint, pie-eyed like Cheech and Chong, and a billow of smoke rolled out my window, and I was all fucked up. Hey, man. It was not the case. I was on my way home from a show. I played a gig earlier in the day, dropped two of the guys off at a band, and was on my way home, you mm -hmm. know? So I went through that whole deal. My blood drawn, my rights were violated, simply because I legally acquired something that was given to me by the state. So I had a medical marijuana card with the state of Pennsylvania written right on it. Mm -hmm. And there was state troopers arresting me. And I got charged with possession. The whole, they charged me anyway. And they just let the court, the courts throw it out. You know, they, that's, that's complete and utter insanity. There's one thing I want to back up yeah. to. You went through a checkpoint to go through this. I went through a DUI checkpoint. I yeah. was not pulled over. And you over. were not swerving. You were not no, speeding. No, You just went through a checkpoint. I went through a Nazi Germany Gestapo-like DUI checkpoint. Literally, check your papers. Where are you going? Where, you know, and, and we're not going to go down that road. I don't feel that's right, but that's a personal opinion I have, you know. Mm -hmm. But the fact is they're just stopping everybody. Mm -hmm. And that they, they went through the whole routine with that. And then, I, you know, I was charged. And you were being honest with them. Yeah, the I, didn't, I didn't get belligerent. I didn't, you know, not, not, I figured I have my card. We're legit. Let's go, yeah. you know. And the DUI was totally based on the fact that they just didn't like the fact that I had a medical marijuana. They don't agree with the program. In fact, the drug recognition expert, who is a state trooper, who is trained to shine a light in your eyes and look for certain indicators that you're intoxicated, they have multiple, multiple bullshit things that they pull that is not backed in science, that is complete and utter stupidity that they use to say that you're under the influence. Like they tried to say that I had green tongue, like my, that Ooh. medical marijuana. No, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Right. And anyone listening to this, do the research, look it up, okay? This is a legit bullshit excuse that the, poli the state police and police officers use. They get this, re this expert who thinks he can look at you and tell you what kind of drugs you're on. So there I had a drug recognition expert while I was handcuffed in the hospital, waiting to get my blood drawn, in my face yelling at me, telling me that, you know, he's worked with men and women that have served in Iraq and they've lost limbs in the war and they're not coming home begging for medical weed. And he had a father-in-law that was passing away from terminal lung cancer. and It'd be okay for him to puff a doobie in his basement and being a complete asshole. And I said, let me tell you something, sir. Us medical cannabis patients aren't hiding in our basements, puffing doobies, sitting around like fucking cavemen, not getting anything done or not living productive lives, you know? And then he proceeded to tell me, and this is a armed state police officer, okay, telling me to my face that if a medical marijuana patient ran into somebody in his family and hurt him, he doesn't think he could control himself. And this is a man in my face with a loaded fire. I mean, this guy was like irate. And it goes to show the ignorance in the culture based on a uniformed state police officer who's wearing the keystone on his shoulder that says Pennsylvania State Police, arresting a tax-paying citizen mm -hmm. for something that the state allowed him to have. Bullshit. If I wasn't in the position to be able to defend myself legally, I would have been fucked. Like royally fucked, okay? Oh yeah, yeah and, it and, makes sense. Yeah. yeah, and the fact is, is that they are able to do this, and that we even have to waste our time in court over this in today's day and age is more than asinine. It's absolutely ridiculous. And if you really want to go down this road, it, it's it's a violation of people's rights, man. And if you want to get into the current political atmosphere that we have, okay? Please do. I, yeah. yeah, I'm not I'm not one to support. You know, a lot of the rioting and a lot of the destruction of property that's going on, okay? Mm -hmm. But I can relate to the anger 
that we have, that certain people have against law enforcement. Now, I am in no way saying that they should be assaulted. You should not be shooting at cops, throwing bricks, Molotov cocktails at cops. But what we have to do is realize that we have to change that culture, okay? If you look at it here where we live in Pennsylvania, locally here in rural PA, the cops aren't stomping on our necks. They're not beating us. You know, they're not killing yeah, people. Not but doing, they're yeah. still, they are still um, abusing people's civil rights, man. They're running hundreds of people through the system that don't need to be. And it's a game they play because it's a moneymaker for them. It's policing for profit. It's not policing to make anything safer. Now, if you're high and you run your car into a fucking tree or the side of someone's house and you're baked out of your skull, then you deserve to get the consequences for that. But being a card-carrying patient who is not intoxicated just because you have metabolites in your blood, mm -hmm. they, I passed all the, the tests with flying colors. You know, the, all the sobriety, and they even told me that in court. But the fact is that we have to change that culture. We have to change. And I don't think that defunding the police is the answer. I think what we need to do is give them more funding and more training and vet our police officers that we have right now. You know? We, and, this, and another part I want to bring to that is push out the weak. Push out the, the narcissistic. Like well, these people that are just... Just yes. in general for assholes. Oh, yeah, a they little, can't a little, the job. A little yeah. unhinged, unstressed. Yeah. The military will train for 12 to 18 months for a six-month deployment, okay? And, and we will take a police officer, run them through an academy, and throw them on the street. And how and, many weeks? Well, and, like, in a stressful, like yeah. Six weeks, yeah. and then that's their career. No, there should be yeah. a stringent, uh, stricter training policy. Yeah. And because a cop can get arrest, or a cop can get dismissed, for having complaints or violent behavior tendencies and go to another state or another place and get a job as a cop. There's no, you know, they have to have a national database, in my opinion, like they do with guns. If you try to buy a gun, there's a federal, they should be keeping track of this, you know? Yeah. And keeping, because it is the few bad that are giving the ones that are really trying to do their job a bad name, you know? Yeah. But I'll argue with any of them on the cannabis front. That's, that's one thing that irks me more. Very and much. what a better way to stir the seeds of mistrust why would somebody want to cooperate or want to talk or want to help you out with something when they know, all of us know somebody or in one way, shape, or form has been put in a predicament due to something along those lines? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, it's that sense, war yeah. on drugs mentality. Now, I'm not here right. saying that heroin and cocaine and methamphetamine should be legal. You know, that's a whole other ballgame. But I'm talking about this wasted time and effort. And the, on, a, on a plant that it cannot kill you. It is a garden is variety no, plant, man. It's a yeah. garden variety plant. As long as it's not lace, as long as it's a pure plant, you know, it's like yeah. indica, sativa, whatever you smoke, it cannot kill you. No. The worst thing's going to happen, you're going to go to sleep, or you're going to get hungry, eat, and then go to sleep. Listen, That's the worst thing's going to happen. The only way that any form of marijuana is going to kill you is if a 400 pound brick of it falls on you. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the best way yeah. I've heard it put. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's just. There's so much, and I, and I could get into more details, and I do, depending on, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and quote different politicians yeah. and different shit, but let's just talk about the straight up common sense behind it, you know? You're holding a drink right there. That could kill me quickly. Yeah, and it's just about the intoxicating qualities, and it's not for everybody. I'm not saying well, that. Uh, no, uh, let's discuss the intoxicating quality. Yeah. This will make me inebriated, slur my speech, not think right, stumble. Weed, it just... In, tell me if I'm wrong. It kind of just slows time down. It, it for everybody it's different, but yeah. for the ninety percent, let's say it just it kind of just levels you out. In in, in a sense, the subconscious. Let's right. say we, let's go with the psychological end of this. It it messes with the subconscious and makes you think a little harder. Either A will make you paranoid, or B will make you think deeper and more intellectual. Am I correct? Yeah, and cannabis isn't for everybody. You know, it reacts, like you said, everybody is different. You just, some people drink, they get mean. Yeah. Some people drink, they pass out. Some people drink, they piss themselves. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's it's a, you know, it's how far you want to take. Everybody reacts differently to it. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like cannabis. You know, some people can smoke and enjoy it, and they're fine. Other people, like you said, it has adverse reactions. They don't like the way it makes them feel. They don't like, you know, it's it's all in. And I'm not saying that just because it's legal that everybody, you know, that like I'm in no way, shape, or form think that young kids should be using. I think it should be regulated like alcohol. You know, I think it should be definitely, you know, like taking care of like responsible use. Teaching, yeah. yeah. Is that, like I said, I'm not up to that part mm -hmm. there. 
I'm sure you would know better than I do. What what are they doing like California, Washington, Oregon, and Colorado? Is it 18 or is it 25 to where to where it's illegal or 21? Um, or what? I'm not 100 percent sure. I think it's either 18 or 21. One of is the two. It? Yeah, yeah. Because I question. Uh, like I said, you can. Like I said, I'll let you mm-hmm. continue. But the uh, I'm sure you study psycho- uh, psychology as much as I have. The human brain does not get fully developed until you're 25. Yeah. With weed, I think in my younger years, it had affected me differently until my early 20s, my mm-hmm. mid-20s. And like I said, it, alcohol has always been kind of the same effect. Yeah. With weed, I think it, it kind of, with your maturity and your growth with the subconscious and whatever else you want to call it, it's going to have a different effect over the years. You oh, know yeah, what I mean? most definitely. And that's one thing that they've proven. And I don't think anybody who is for responsible cannabis legislation would argue that. I'm in no way thinking that we should be handing out fucking joints to high school kids, man. You know, now, medical cannabis is another story, you know. I, I do feel that the medical benefits of marijuana can definitely help children when the circumstances are right, you know. Right, the seizures. And I, exactly. There, there's more, I mean, you could talk about seizures, different disorders. Um, you could have autism. There's much, there. you know, and that's not for everybody as well. But that is one instance where when done the right way and responsibly can definitely improve the well-being and the overall quality of life of people that are under but i'm not anywhere near talking about recreational use you know right i'm talking about medical yeah yeah, medical use that was advised and under the supervision of a a physician or you know doing it the right way and so yeah i agree with you there i mean they've shown that it definitely just like alcohol does you know it's a stimulant that affects you know, the brain in different ways, but it's, I look at it like this. They want to talk about the addiction side of things too, you know, and how they work. It's the same. Yes. Can it be addictive? Sure. It's not as addictive as like heroin or cocaine or something, but caffeine's addictive. You know, I mean, people are addicted to fast food (laughs) or nicotine, nicotine, soda, you know, sugary food. It's the same exact principle, kind of principle that it releases dopamine in the brain. That in, yeah. in, any, in any, you know, form of life, everybody's different. You know, overuse can cause dependency, and there are issues like that that can be done. I, uh, like I said, I'll let you get to, uh, there's yeah. another point I want to bring up with this. You brought up a good point. Like you said, these uh, addictive so nicotine, alcohol, there's certain things that are do- uh, attached to that dopamine in a certain area of the mm-hmm. brain. But I don't, I may be wrong on this, like, I don't see that as cannabis being one of them, as same as mushrooms and any true like i said stop me when i'm wrong the hallucinogenics that have were made illegal that were a naturally occurring substance like you know as well as i do acid and uh mushroom stuff like that if they're made purely without being mixed they are perfectly healthy for the human mind and well they, psychedelics is a whole nother issue in itself you know yeah and, and i see what you're saying um you know psilocybin they've done a lot of research recently to find that psilocybin, which would be mushrooms, is beneficial for people to have, you know, the multi, a myriad PTSD, of conditions. PTSD, all depression, yes, everything. terminal is, illness. There's a lot of, there are benefits to all of those those substances, you know, mm-hmm. but there's also a downside, you know, a downside to them. Now, LSD is not necessarily, that's not a naturally occurring, that's a lab synthesized chemical. Right, right. But, then again, they all work differently. They all work different ways of the brain. They all have a different chemical, a different chemical composition, a different way that they affect, you know, how the you know how the brain functions, and yeah. they, it affect everybody differently. But because yeah. like, I want to back you up on this. I know you're going to know more about this than I do. When it came to acid and the hallucinogens being le- illegal, that was during the Nixon administration, because he put that under the uh, help me out here that. The bill he wrote for that era, the controlled substance, the vetic, yes. the but he, uh, the device, the cosmetic act or whatever one? it is, yeah. Was it, it oh, LSD is a scheduled one, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. And um, I mean, I'm not as versed in the psychedelics, right? As yeah, I the am weed cannabis. is more, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, and I'm I'm passionate about you know the cannabis plant itself and the benefits that it can have, but there's also benefits to be had, you know, for psychedelics too. You know, when done the right way and done the right, right you know. But there's different, and if you really want to go down that road, you know, we could get, we could go deep in that rabbit hole, oh, and, we, yeah. and we could get into the, you know, if you really want to get into the psychedelics, and we could be talking about wanting to explore different realms of our consciousness of people too, 
you know, like there's there's so many ways that you could take that, you know, take that, you, know, you could microdose for, mm -hmm. you know, for more of a medicinal purpose for doing and stuff. And a lot of people, would, yeah. uh, there's a lot of people that come out saying that it has helped them but psychologically. I, I mean, yeah. yeah, and I don't know enough of the facts about it to sit here and advocate for, you know, certain things along those lines. But mm -hmm. there are different, you know, and, and that could be an open mind too. You get a lot of people that, you know, want to explore, that, that are convinced that we as people this is this this reality that we know this world that we live in is multi-layered there's yeah. more to it than we know and some people claim that DMT and other stronger hallucinogenic psychedelic drugs can kind of open parts of our brain or activate parts of our brain or parts of our consciousness subconscious that, yeah, that we're not aware of to take us to other places you know so there, there is there's validity behind that to an extent too you know mm -hmm. but are you going to there's just there's so many different you know ways you could justify that, but that can be abused like anything else, and that's also not for everybody, you know. That's right, right. yeah, but the psychedelics that's um, you know definitely had an impact on our culture. If you look at the counterculture of the 1960s and what that did, you know, when LSD hit big time, I mean, just look at what the Beatles, man, and Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. some of the amazing creative stuff <laughs> that came out of that era. There's a, a one thing I want to add to that. Like I said, there's there's always, a, like I said, there's always you know as well as I do. There's a million articles out there that could be rewritten, written this way. The one thing I question with the hallucinogenic is there has never like same as weed. There has never been a fatality over straight weed that has not been laced. There's not been somebody who's smoked enough to die. The worst yeah. thing you're gonna do is go to sleep. When it comes to acid and uh, mushrooms and stuff like that, the only people who have ever and this has been covered up is the only people who have passed from it is people who have had the stuff that was laced with it or chemically altered in some way, shape, or form that has yeah. made them pass. I don't know enough about the psychedelics to, yeah, to yeah. but I can say this though, is that to say that the the state of mind that certain chemicals can put you in too. Yeah. You know, it may not have necessarily been the psilocybin or the L S D that killed that person. But the stupid shit they did while under the influence, you know, jumping right. on something. Right, it, it triggered something. Right, from right. And there have been view, people yes. that their argument to the dangers of cannabis are um, psychotic episodes or different, um, you know, people that smoke and go crazy and do stupid things. And right. that, that can happen, but it just can happen like alcohol, too. And I look at that, it's once again, it reverts back to the point where it's not for everybody. You know, and right. it, it is it is safer now. Smoking in general, smoking anything, whether it's tobacco, yes. si you know, cigars and weed. tobacco. You know, as well, yeah. as, like, tobacco is just a, a just a quick high, and you don't. You, right. There's no. There's but just no, the fact of inhaling inhaling anything hot into the lungs is not good for you. So they could say that those are the arguments, but there's other ways to ingest cannabis besides smoking it as well. You well know, I so. want to bring that point up to you yeah. too. This is, this is something you'll know a lot about. With cannabis, I've never met anybody who's had a lung problem, and this has been spoken about many a time. Anybody who's smoked it, we, we can get to the edible in a little bit. Mm -hmm. That stuff is ungodly potent, but the smoking of it, there's not a person out there. To go to Willie Nelson, go to Be Real from Cypress. I mean, all these guys have been smoking forever. Their lungs are perfect. Well, Willie it's, has recently, I've seen interviews and read he stopped smoking due oh, to... So because okay. of the long issues and because he has, oh, no shit, he he still, okay. they say he vapes and he does edibles and you know you can vaporize yeah, yeah. bud too you and know, the candy to oh yeah yeah, yeah. now that, see, smoking yeah. anything long term can you say it's as bad as smoking cigarettes I would I, say no, it's, it, that it, it's better than smoking yes cigarettes. but smoking is be. smoking regardless of what you're smoking you know but, you know, but there's one thing I want to bring up with that like, and I'm glad you brought this up. The there's people that have had like a bronchitis issue issues yeah, yeah. and stuff. And when they smoke, the cannabis is an exp expiratory, like uh, it, it clears the lungs okay. out. And over long, like you said, anything yeah. over long term use, hard use will wear on your body. But this does keep the fluid out of your lungs. People with bronchitis have been proven to smoke, it, and it takes the fluid out of their lungs. You you literally cough it up. That like you see yeah. people that take a long drag and. They're, ugh, do you see some people that are spitting up all that fluid in their lungs? It is an expectorant. Yeah. I, I, I haven't I heard that. that. That's the, but that you know, there's that's another thing too. Is there if the government, if our federal government would lift the 
um, band, a scheduled one yes. band, it would open up research and right. it would open, it would, the floodgates would open and we would be able to better understand mm -hmm. and how to better use this plant to yeah, as, a, as a nation itself. Right, yeah. right. Instead Not of, just, but California, like California, they've, they've, they're allowed a little more because they've been there for a while. They had, they're allowed yeah. the more and the studies I've read from them, like I said, the expo expiratory mm -hmm. that has that's been clinically proven by them through there and Colorado too that to, to clear out the lungs. Like you said, if you were to yeah legalize it federally to where you could continue to grow in the research of it, that is gonna make yep. a big difference. I just think it's about responsible responsible legislation and mm -hmm. making it available for everybody who wants to be in the business to get into the game as well. You yeah. know, not making it so it's just a you know, a corporate cannabis type thing. But just there's multiple yeah. the financial games, the scientific games everything that we could learn from this and just to get over the bullshit yeah. and allow our police officers and allow, you know, they talk about our, our heroin epidemic and the problems that we have in this country. Think of the millions of dollars that we could be pumping into some of our um, healthcare situations where we can give people the proper counseling, the proper social and um, economic, well, I shouldn't say the programs that they could use, you know, you have the, the the way that I look right. at things, and you're saying this is from the, yeah, from, can, yes, yes, from the taxation and being able yeah. to get there. You know, it can help so many people mm -hmm. that we would be. It's silly at this point in time, especially when everyone's hurting for money. Every state government, our federal government, everybody. You know, yeah, that's and, a good point too. Yeah, and it's a good way too that we could fund a lot of. They're talking about school districts not having enough money, mental health programs people not being able to, caseworkers being out there to be able to help people or to do what they need to do, there's the answer. Right here is our answer. Billions and billions of dollars to be had that could improve where we live. You know, we could take some of this money and help train our law enforcement, you know, help deal with some of our military. I mean, think about the federal. Here's one thing that I like to throw out there. The benefits that the federal government could, could get for our VA. Think about this. I would personally, I would personally have no problem if they said, you know, hey, we're going to use federal cannabis tax or federal money that's made for this to help our VA hospital. They're talking about yeah. funding. We could be helping our veterans, helping our veterans get off of dangerous prescription opioids and antipsychotic yes. medications to give them a natural alternative, which once again isn't for everybody, but could help them. And you have so many people right now that can't seek that help they need because they're worried about losing their be their VA benefits or worried about losing their jobs, you, you know, or something along right, those right. lines. And there's just so many different places that could benefit and people that could benefit from the money. And instead... Yeah, just at a state level and federal level. Right. Where is it going? It's, it's the, the police are getting the fines and the money that they're confiscating from drug dealers and stuff. Right. And, and we were just, like you said... Uh, you brought up a very good point. I, I, and that, I can't believe I haven't thought about this to this point. If we were to flip the script on this, and because you've seen as well as I do, the amount of tax in Colorado, California, and uh, Oregon, Washington, mm -hmm. the amount of tax they made off of that would far trump the DUIs and all the drug oh. charges. They've made how many how many millions and billions it's, of dollars? It's not in the that? millions, it's in the billions if you really want to look at oh, it. Oh, good lord. And that would take care of, that would yeah. trump everything that we're doing I didn't right. come prepared. You know, it's very... No, no, it's fine, but it's just could, a generalization yeah. of it, yeah. You could Google the numbers and look yeah. at the amount of yeah. fraud. I mean, Illinois alone, Illinois has been, I think, a year into the legalization game, mm -hmm. and they are setting record numbers. Each quarter, it's getting higher and higher, the amount of tax revenue and the money that they're pulling in. And not to mm -hmm. mention... It also can create jobs. I mean, yeah. think of think of if you could go into places, okay, and especially some of the harder hit economic areas of our cities and inner cities and different places, mm -hmm. and give some of these people a chance. Some of the same people that lives have been ruined by being arrested, who are selling, who are selling or doing something. So do we, yeah. Now, okay, let's say if we went to these people and said, now you can have a legit business, a legit job a legit by the books, you know, to contribute to our economy, to contribute to your neighborhoods. You know, it can bring money and it could bring, I mean, look at some of the neighborhoods in Oakland, you know, Oaksterdam, they call it. There's a couple, you know, small neighborhoods that have been completely 
revitalized due to the fact that they had cannabis businesses and things. So it, there's yeah, there's yeah. M- there's many 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 unexplored avenues that could be benefited by that. You know, just allowing some of these people who we consider criminals to go legit to make to have them being productive members of our society. Do you really think that somebody wants to be sitting in some trap house selling dime bags through a fucking window if they could set up a legal business and actually grow and sell it legally? You know, that there's yeah, always yeah. going to be the black market. We get there's a good point yeah, on that. there's it always going to be you know. people that are going to want to go below the radar, but given the opportunity, you know, you have there's so many people that just don't have an opportunity, don't have a way, but yet I've met so many people that come that are all brought together by cannabis as well. People of all walks of life who I personally never would have talked to or never would have been in the same situation. I mean, can I, some, you know, redneck hillbilly who grew up in the middle of nowhere outside of, you know, in the country outside of a, a small town, mm-hmm. can I relate to the same lifestyle and the same plight that someone who has who grew up in the projects in Chicago? Absolutely not. Like, we live two completely different lifestyles. But there's that one thing that can unite us that we could, you know, that, that, that right. you know, it can benefit them as well as us, too. And I think that, I think the politicians have been too busy, here in Pennsylvania especially with our legislation, our governor and lieutenant governor, who, I, I mean, I haven't agreed with all of our governor's policies over the past year, you know, with the COVID and everything, but I can agree with him on, the, you know, wanting to push the legalization and they've mm-hmm. turned it into a political issue where the, the, the right here in our state is absolutely refusing to hear. They're saying there's bigger issues to take care of now, getting our businesses open, getting our state, you know, things. And I can agree with that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, this could be a good way for us to make up some of this lost revenue. And, and this very lo- quickly, and this, too. Effective. Right, right. Yeah. And the very first politician, this is what surprises me. I don't know whether you love them or hate them. You know, you talk about the politics and whether you're on the left or the right. I can't believe that somebody like, you know, our current politics, like Donald Trump or Joe Biden or anybody, even Barack Obama, this could have been the uniter. This could have been the great, you know, if they came out. Point, yeah, yeah you, and, just, and if somebody like presented it out and said, listen, such. this is what we're going to do. We're going to throw this out there. We're going to regulate it responsibly. And we're going to bring somebody who could be on the complete opposite end of the political spectrum of me or you. We have that in common. What a better way to unite people who really don't have any common ground. It's no different yeah. than like Barack Obama used to say, let's come to the White House and have a beer. Remember, you used to have different people over. In, or when you're in a social gathering, you're, it's the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it could be something that could bring people together, I believe. You know, it could really help some of our, our um, social issues that we have. You know, they talk about... You know, the race issues and the problems that we have, you know, Mm -hmm. what a better way to get people to get out there and just become part of one, you know, become, you know, bring everybody together. Together, yeah, man. For a common good. I don't see what's wrong with that. And it really isn't. We're we're just preaching division and all this shit when really we should just come together under this and say, let's do what we can do to work together and try to contribute, you know, our way respectfully, safely, and legally without being arrested or you know and then not to mention you know you take a let's say you take a misdemeanor charge here in the state of pennsylvania i'm kind of bouncing all over the place here no no but that misdemeanor charge that you get has lifelong ramifications you can infect your employment it can infect housing it can infect student loans there's many 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 things that it can affect when really for what for what you see what i'm saying like what reason does making that that you know that plan illegal you know, cannabis and those misdemeanors. What is that really, truly doing to make our society a better, safer place? For, it's not for like, our family and our kids to grow up in. It's not. It's really not. But yeah, you know, it, it was made like you said. We got to jump back a little bit to what right. you said about the William H. Hearst. It was made illegal back then because they were protecting their own interests. Right. Now today we right. have another interest, and, and it just we has realize to be, we're more educated now than right. ever. We have we, the power at our fingertips to go. Okay, this is bullshit. You know what I mean? Yep. And we're at the power now to realize that this cannot harm us. We're at the point now where we say these certain things, certain things that we were told as kids, is like this is wrong. This is, no, no, it's not. We know this is right. okay for us for certain people. And what we got to also look at too is um, you as well as I remember going through dare class in school. Remember, oh. you know, and they would come oh and they'd, they'd feed. They they would 
they would just feed us a bunch of propaganda bullshit in order to make us, you know, little sheep in order to, to step in line and follow, you know, to mm -hmm. make us not think for ourselves. What we should be doing is educating our children from a young age, just like we did with alcohol, that yeah. this is, a, you know, a, a responsible, you know, you have to be a certain age, responsible use, teaching them instead of demonizing it, you know, and showing right, them. And right. then also, it has also been proven that states that legalize also teen use drops, their opioid prescription overdose and heroin overdose rates drop considerably. Yeah, let's, a, let's, a, let's think about yeah. this, and this is, this is proven, you can look at this. Okay. All right, you got a state and you have young kids. A lot of, you know, it's the part of the counterculture. It's bad. It's the illegal thing to do. Yeah, because we were told legal. that yeah. as kids. Now when, when you grow up somewhere where it's legal and it's not a big deal, you're eliminating that entire counterculture. Yeah. You're eliminating that whole, so they think about it, oh, it's just, oh, we that's something that my old you uncle smokes. Or so, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yes, it's like, it's exactly, almost like exactly lame to said. an extent, you know? The thought of it's out of it because yeah, it's not, yeah. it's like, oh, mom and dad are, you know, you don't have to right. and try I, and I saw and that. Shit. I saw that in yeah. Europe. I went to, the first time I ever went to Amsterdam, and I, mm -hmm. I love traveling in Europe, and I went over there uh, the first time with our, our guitar player at the time, and I went, and I was thinking that it was going to be like, you know, you'd think of the, the stoner culture here at home. You know, mm -hmm. you thought everywhere was going to be yeah, like hippies. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back and go ahead. Yeah, we'll but get it, back it, to it, it wasn't the case. It was normalized and looked at just like somebody having a cup of coffee or smoking a cigarette. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't right, like right. they eliminate that whole subculture. That, that But see, there's some of us that really enjoy the counterculture, the subculture aspect, and that could still be celebrated with it being legal, but at the same time, it normalizes it, and it makes, it just yeah, makes it's, a it's different... Yeah, it's like going, right. us going for coffee, or us right. going for a smoke, or it's whatever, this, yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense. It is, right. it's just, I think it's time, it's just time to quit fucking around, you know, and I get pissed off, because whether you're on the left or the right... It's it's just becoming it's becoming I just can't see how both sides can't come together. There's just as many Republicans against prohibition, you know, as there are them. There's there's multi, um, sorry, multi cultural groups too that on both sides that agree mm -hmm. that this is something that just needs to be it needs to be ended. It's pointless anymore. It was. It You're really. Right. Yeah. And I think that it's creating more strife and creating more issues amongst people than it is harm. You know, it's it it ends. Think of all the distrust that people have just from a cop thinking they smell weed and rooting through someone's car, or mm -hmm. searching your shit, or you know, like violating your rights over over a goddamn stupid, plant that grows man, naturally it's so in the dumb. world. It's so dumb. But and like you said, but, but it's uh, you can stop me when I'm wrong. Yeah. The the generations before us, back then when this those papers that William H. Hurst released because of his paper mill and all that. They put us, uh, they planted a seed in these people's heads. You know, you know as well as I do, even up to today, we're starting to wise up a little more. But yeah. the, the media tends to affect us because we read this and we follow along with this population, and this side, or who, you know, we come, we become absorbed with that because that's uh, the common thing. When that, when he released that, you know, he made it, like you said, Black people and Mexicans, that was, he was aiming at towards that they're coming for us. It was just a bunch of bullshit. It, yeah. it really was, because he was looking out for his own interest. And now we have generations that fell into that. It's like, oh, yeah, we're yeah. stuck in this. We're against you. Let's just cut yeah. the shit. Let's cut all the, trim all the fat, and let's just say that it was based in old school racist politics. That's all that it comes down to. Yes. And it, in this day and age, when we're trying so hard and we're pushing for social justice and we're pushing mm -hmm. for every, you know, for all the equality I and mean, everything that's going on in our country, and this is still one thing that we're holding on to. Mm -hmm. And I just don't get it. I really just don't understand it. You know, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, really. and, and I and I, was, I would be one hundred percent honest with you. I would not have a distrust of certain aspects of law enforcement if it wasn't for that. But at the same time, I put myself in that position. To get, you know, to have that interaction with the cop, to put, you know, to go there, knowing yeah. that it could be, but that's beyond, the, you know, I'm not, well, not going to sit good, here. You did a good yeah, thing, I'm not going to sit here and just play the victim either, you know what no, I mean? No, like, no, you're right. They're, they're, you know, and, um, but at the same time, I just think that it, it could create that, it could really repair a lot of burnt bridges, man. It yeah. would really make people give a little bit more of a trust and a little bit more of a, 
you know, especially in our cities and places. I know as you as well as I. You have, so let's say, you have somebody that something, there's a domestic disturbance or a crime that happens in the middle of the street in, in the city. Let's say Williamsport, for example. Mm -hmm. Police go knocking on everyone's doors wanting to uh, talk. Did you see anything? Did you hear anything? You know? Mm -hmm. Most people don't want to cooperate. They don't try to cooperate. They, they, the cops sit there and they wonder why nobody wants to talk to us, okay? It's because they don't trust them. Why don't they trust them? Because every one of those people knows somebody or has been involved or something. You see what I'm saying? It's the same yes. thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, they knock on the door and they'll be like, oh, we smell weed. Uh-oh. So not only then, you see, it just creates yeah, a whole other, yeah, and it's distrust. something, it's it, stupid, it's stupid. And people would say, it's dumb as weed, it's so dumb. But no, it's not like that. It's the fact that people don't understand how, how ingrained it is in our culture, too. Yes. And the fact that it's it's just that it's been a part of our culture right. for since the 70s, 60s. A Cheech and Chong. I mean, that's I know. that's what everybody yeah. looks at. It's been a part but, of our culture, and everybody thinks they're dumb and all this. Uh, please but, go ahead but, with this. I know, I but know truthfully, gonna... man, I mean, I'm not there, but you could you could you could ask pretty much anybody, even whether you live in a big city, mm -hmm. where they're even more a little more liberal with some of their cannabis laws. But if to a rural environment, man, both sides of the both sides of it. Someone's not going to want to trust or cooperate with somebody when they know something as stupid as that. And especially when cops, local state police, and other people in the state here use that. It's always the start of something, you know? It's like they arrest somebody for weed. They go in through the system. They're on probation. And that just, it can create a domino effect of issues, you know? And it, I just yes, think it's, yeah. it's time. It's time. And you have, I just can't believe that enough police officers haven't been a little more vocal unless they truly and I respect that you know I don't I'm not the kind of person that dislikes or disregards somebody because their opinion doesn't match with mine right, right. but I just think that this is common sense I don't even think of it as a political issue you know I think of it as a common sense issue you know it is and yeah. that's in, and in that's, history too there's a history right, behind it right. you have to learn right and I don't feel that we're ever going to be able to move forward in a society or be able to unite unless we can trust or have some form of um, what would the word be? Trust or have some form of respect for law enforcement or our powers to be, but it's just little stupid things like this that just get people caught up, you know? It is, it, yeah. It's, it, it's really, it's really It's ridiculous. education and learning. And, right, and it's know. different for me because cannabis is an important part of my life. I mean, medical cannabis has helped me immensely. I've gone through spinal, you know, spinal yeah, surgery. Yeah, yeah. I've gone through a lifelong of chronic pain having to do with severe degenerative disc and I've had multiple disc blow. I have arthro you know, so many things that yeah. that I've had multiple doctors just try to shove bottles and bottles of pills down my throat. That's a good point you need to bring up because right. the, the opioids are far more addictive than the we will ever be. That, that's exactly. proven. You and, cannot deter you and cannot deter especially that. if your family has a predetermined or a predisposed addiction issue. You know, we all know that that can be genetic. If you come from a family that has alcohol or drug problems, you yeah. fall. Right, it's so easy to get set into that trap, you know. And it can happen to anybody. It could happen to a seventy-year-old, a seventy-year-old man, mm -hmm. you know. I, and that person could be one of those anti-drug people, but they go through one surgery for a shoulder or something, mm -hmm. and they end up coming out addicted to. But that never happened to yeah. me. It's not, you know. And then they see, oh my gosh. Like that, you know, that there is a right. serious, and that the whole opiate epidemic, and that's a whole other thing. It is. It, yeah, we itself, could spend hours we could here for that, that but it is a, a way, you know, cannabis can be some people's anti-drug. It really, truly can mm -hmm. be. But at the same time, there are some addicts who can come out of rehab and they don't use anything. But there are some who come out and they use cannabis medicinally. It trips the trigger. Yeah, to help them. You know, there's there's many different aspects of it. But overall, I think it's time for a change. It is. I think it's time Very for a much. change for the better. So, anyway, well, I'd love Yeah, well, apparently our batteries are... That's cool. I think we... Yeah, damn I, Like I said, man, I could sit here and talk about... You and me both, about man. Drugs, we got so much about to talk about. About fishing, about camping, about cannabis reform. And I could yes. sit here and talk politics. Yes. We could sit here uh, and talk politics, man, for the next... We're gonna you do know, it again because I, I I would love to, man. I'd love to come in. We can divulge. You know, we can talk about. You know, yes. you, you know, you should do a recommendation. You should do like a road stories segment. That's gonna be my my uh, recommendation. Have you handled that? Yeah, can, where you can have like any musicians you have. You should have them come in and tell like a 
the cra- you know the craziest story that they that they that, want oh, to divulge. Did you hear that? You're going to Jesse for that one. Don't set, I'll set that shit up with no problem. Yeah, man. So, Jesse. But yeah, this is this is cool, man. I'd love to come do it again, man. We I, have I can to, sit because here because we're, we're just too much. I know we're just, you're, we're I just know you're touching the surface, man. You yes, know? I know your your so. mind's like mine. You, there's a lot running out there we yeah, cannot man. get to. We, we can talk about anything, dude. I could come here and talk about aliens for. <laughs> you and me, I, we're gonna get on that, man. So yeah. you know. we're gonna save it. Let's just yeah. save it yeah. for the next time. Yeah. It's yeah. been a damn sure. good time. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. We're gonna we're gonna call it good for the night because we had a damn good conversation. Excellent. Let's, Thank you, brother. Let's go. Yeah, let's take a break. <laughs>